Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the Christocentric meal, a daily reflection of your true identity in Christ Jesus. Abel Damina is my name and I'm excited to welcome every one of you today. We're going to have a wonderful time studying and learning the word of his grace. You need to invite friends and family members. Let's get into this word. I'm telling you to build you up and you will never be the same after the broadcast. I have co-hosting with me this morning, my wife, Dr. Rachel Damina. Honey, good morning. Hello, everyone. Good morning and welcome to the broadcast. Praise God. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for grace, mercy, and Jesus. Words are not enough to express our gratitude for what you've done for us. But we say thank you all the same for saving us, living in us, making us your dwelling place eternally. And therefore, we have all that is yours on our inside gifts of grace and mercy and today we access the deep things of god by the holy spirit we pray for revelation knowledge for everyone watching the broadcast the eyes of your understanding enlighten we unlock your mind and we declare that clarity comes to you today in the name of jesus amen. thank you for answered prayer in jesus name amen amen praise god amen. grab your devotion and let's get to work this morning <clears throat> Today we're looking at dreams. Dream, 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 dream. Everybody keeps asking, what about dreams? What about dreams? Well, we're studying the leading of the Spirit, and today we're looking at dreams. Joseph received guidance through the dreams he had prior to the dream. He had a prevalent thought on his mind about Mary's conception, and he resolved to secretly put her away. Matthew 1, 24. Let me read for us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. That means he woke up from the dream and knew God was probably speaking to him. Something about a dream is that right in the dream, you are so alert, right in the dream. Therefore, to the physical body, it is a dream. But the spiritual faculties are alert. That is why you almost think it is real, you know, when you dream. Observing Peter's explanation of the event in Acts chapter 2, he quoted the prophecy of Joel. We're going to read Joel chapter 2, verse 17 and 28. Oh, yeah. Okay. Dreams. And this has been a very, you know, very crucial issue in the body of Christ, world, the world over. So let's listen carefully because we want to look at scriptures and be able to establish where dreams comes in in the leading of the spirit or in every has to do with the believer. Yeah. Acts 2 17. And it shall come to pass in the last day, said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Your old men shall dream dreams. Joel 2 28. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Prophesy. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Joel 2, 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. So dreams can come from the spirit on the believer. Dreams can come from the spirit on the believer. Let us examine what Solomon said about dreams in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 3. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. So dreams come from a multitude of business. Read verse 7, honey. For in the multitude of dreams and many words there are also diverse vanities, but fear thou God. So in essence, you were saying dreams come out of the multitude of activities mm. of the mind. Mm. The activities of the mind is what translates into a dream. This means that there was a communication of activity in the mind of that man. Not in the physical. Not because in his some, mind. Some children after playing ball, then they dream. Or, or the dream they... also comes from activities in their in mind. In the physical. Because of football you're playing, it's in your mind. Mind, okay. You're calculating. Mm -hmm. You're thinking. Yeah. Before you so throw it. So all those business is in Everything the mind. Is controlled from the mind. Mm. So the then now yeah. come to So then it. when it is when your mind is saturated with, with playing football, uh -huh. then in the dream you continue playing Play football. Playing football. Yeah. It's just like ladies who get obsessed with some guy or some guy who get 
obsessed with a lady. Yeah. He starts dreaming of her in Marriage, the dream. Marriage, yeah. I mean, he starts seeing her Marry in the dream, her. or she starts seeing him in the dream. Yeah. All that is activity in the mind. Yes. So the mind generates activities that translate into dreams. Mm -hmm. Now, this means that there was a communication of activity in the mind of that man. Hence, he goes into sleep and engages in that activity. Mm -hmm. In the dream, there is an exercise of the mind. Hence, the man has a part to play in the dreams that he has. Mm. Though God leads us by dreams, however, this is not to say God talks to us through every dream we have. We have. You see, in the dream, the Spirit of God could communicate to us using dreams. And that communication is gifts of the Spirit. Word of wisdom, it could be a word of knowledge. It could be a revelation, yeah. a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, or a revelation. Yeah. And it could come from activities, mm -hmm. too much activities. Yes. And it could also come from the devil. Yes, also. So it's either to scare from you. the devil, mm -hmm. or a word of wisdom, or a word of knowledge from God, mm -hmm. or an activity from Business, yourself. Yes. Those are the three things that are responsible or constitutes into a dream. Now, in the body you're sleeping, but in your mind you are alert. That's why you can see it. Now, you know, Kenneth Hagin told a story of a woman. Years ago, I read that book. This woman was a member of his church, and she had a dream. And in that dream, her daughter had a ghastly motor accident and died. And so she began to pray and tell God, please let my daughter not die. Please let my daughter not die. And she was praying that prayer, but she was already in fear because the dream was so real to her. But she didn't know any better. Few days after, the daughter was going down the road and a car ran over the daughter okay. and killed the daughter. So yes, while she later. was still mourning, she was still mourning that okay. issue. Mm -hmm. Then she had another dream. Mm -hmm. And in that mm -hmm. dream, her house Got caught fire, fire and was down. burnt down. So now she couldn't take it because this one too was real. So she now went to Kenneth Hagin, her pastor, and told him her experience. And Kenneth Hagin said to her, okay, I'm going to pray for you and I don't want you to pray. Don't say anything. Just be quiet. Let me do the praying. All you can say is amen to my prayer. And he prayed and took authority and canceled that dream. And that dream never came to pass. So she came to him and said, so why did the first one happen and the second one didn't happen? And Kenneth Hagin said, he said to her, when the first dream came, you were so overwhelmed with fear. And fear connects you to, to the fear, object of your fear. fear. That's why God has not given us fear. Fear fertilizes the operation of the devil. That's why the devil likes to operate with fear. Mm -hmm. That's why I have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And in the second dream, he said that's why he told her not to pray because he didn't want her to bring her fear into that prayer. And he spoke authoritatively and dismissed that dream and commanded that dream never to have effect. And as he spoke those words in faith, he believed it. And she said amen to it, and that settled it. So out of the dream, you could come out with fear, or you could come out with faith. Mm -hmm. In confidence that yes. this, no, it's not part of the word now, God's package. What only. determines whether you come out mm. in fear or faith is knowledge. knowledge. What do you know? What do you know? Because if you don't know what the word of God says about you, you don't have a revelation of what Christ has done for you. Any devil can come through your dream, mesmerize you, mesmerize you, and you wake up with Fall fear. It. And that fear will connect you to your fear. That's what Job said in Job chapter 3, verse what 25. I that which I fear greatly has come upon me. When you fear something, it's because you believe in that. If you didn't believe in it, you wouldn't be afraid of it. Fear is a connector. It connects you to your fear. And that's why scripture tells you, Fear not over 360 times. Fear not, fear not, fear not. Because God doesn't walk in an environment of fear. Fear paralyzes. The Bible says fear is a tormentor. Mm -hmm. Fear torments you. Fear punishes you. You know, like we said some time back, mm. most times people die not because of the thing that is threatening their them. lives, but because of fear. Mm. Fear is a weapon in the hand of the enemy. And fear thrives in an environment of ignorance. When you lack the knowledge of God, then you become afraid. And when you are afraid, you can't operate in righteousness and in boldness. Oh, yes. You are crippled by the enemy. You become a coward. You start running away.
from what does not exist. Mm -hmm. Because most people are running away from what does not exist. It's just fear. It's just fear. You know, in those days when I was in boarding school, far back in my secondary school days, mm -hmm. there was a senior in my school who was like a terrorist. Mm -hmm. He was a sadist. Every time he sees junior students, he's beating. Whether you've done something to him or not, he will just beat you, mm -hmm. that senior. For those of you that have been in boarding schools, especially in Africa, you, will, you can identify with what I'm saying. So this senior was always beating us and beating us. So one night, something happened to that senior. <laughs> A little child took the white bed sheets that they used to put on our bed <laughs> Definitely. and wrapped himself with it, a very small boy, wrapped himself with the white bed sheet right to his head, only left his eyes open, see, and went see. to the bathroom to go and ease himself. <laughs> and this was about like 2 a.m. So <laughs> the senior, at the same time, was going to the bathroom too, without thinking when he saw the way the boy was coming. He thought it was a ghost. Yes. <laughs> he took off. Yes. The guy took off and ran through the window where they had louvers. Those of you that are in Africa, you know sharp what louvers glass, are? Yes. Sharp glasses. You know, short, short, sharp glasses to form the window. Mm. He ran through that, broke it, and he tore his body to pieces. And he was shouting, definitely I saw the ghost. Mm -hmm. It was a ghost, mm. but I cannot describe it. <laughs> definitely I saw the ghost. He was singing that blood gushing all over I saw the ghost. Trauma. It was a ghost, but I cannot describe it. Mm. This boy went and hid himself because he knows this guy would kill him. Hid himself. It was the next day when junior students were discussing about the event that happened to senior. <laughs> the senior, I don't want to call his name because he may be watching the broadcast. He, he, that the little boy said, I was the one. Mm. I wrapped myself up in my <laughs> This guy was an admission for close to a month <laughs> because his body was destroyed. Right. He had to, mm. he had to teach, some teach all his body and order. Mm. And students had liberty for that period. He <laughs> will never come back the same. Fear can make you run away from mm. what does not exist. <laughs> this guy ran away from what was not what existing. Existed. And in his mind, he believed no, he, he saw, saw a ghost. ghost. There may not be watching that may be running away from what does not exist. <laughs> it's just fear. Fear can make you yeah, hurt yourself. Torment. It's torment. Mm. It's torment. And most dreams will either produce fear or faith mm. depending on mm. your knowledge. Strength, yes. Depending on your knowledge. Yes, that is why your knowledge of God's word is very critical. Dreams will come from a multitude of business. And when they come out of a multitude of business, when you subject them to the word of God, you know whether to take them serious or not. If it is the devil suggesting those things that formed images in your mind because you expose your mind to activities mm -hmm. or to things that made it easy for the devil to conjure images, when you subject it to the word of God, you will know whether to take it or not. And if it is God communicating to you by word of knowledge or word of wisdom through your dreams, when you subject it to the word of God, you will know whether to take it or not. Mm -hmm. Because God's word, whether by word of knowledge, word of wisdom or prophecy, will take on the character of God. Mm. It will take on the character of God. Anything that produces fear is not God. Mm. Anything that produces fear. So dreams, therefore, must be subjected to the scrutiny of God's word. Dreams are not final in themselves. That you had a dream doesn't mean you have heard from God. You only subject it to the word of God to be able to determine whether this is from God or not. In fact, right here in our devotional, we have it here. Hence, the man has a part to play in the dreams that he has. Though God leads us by dreams, however, this is not to say God talks to us through every dream we have. No. It is therefore instructive for one not to exalt dreams above, above the word of God. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. And that is why... You know, some of you that have followed our teachings, you hear us say, do not subscribe to those books that you buy all over the place where they say 50 ways to interpret dreams. There's mm -hmm. nothing like 50 ways to interpret dreams. Dreams on its own is not a doctrine that a Christian builds his life on. Mm -mm. Dream on its own does not form the voice of God. Mm -mm. It must be subjected to the scrutiny of the scripture. Yes. It doesn't matter who is having the dream. Yes. It doesn't matter who is having the dream. Some people just know how to cooperate with the devil in their dream mm -hmm. to create evil. Mm -hmm. And they will tell you, I dreamt it and I've told you every happened. time I dream, it must happen. Yes, it happens because you and Satan are in an agency of making evil happen. Especially people that have this, all their dreams are always about evil happening. Mm -hmm. Always about evil happening and most of it happens. It's because you don't know better. When the devil suggested those things, you, you agreed it. with him mm -hmm. and in your agreement, you empowered him to make it happen in the real world. 
But if you know better, you stand up and say no to it. Mm -hmm. You just rebuke it because you know better. You are in authority here. Yes. What you permit is permitted. Mm -hmm. What you disallow is disallowed. Mm. You know, in, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, honey, you want to read for us whether to take the dream serious or not. I mean, there, even prophecy, like I said to you, even prophecy, you have to judge it by the word of God. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So the peace of God is critical. If it is God, the peace of God will be an umpire. It will guide your heart and mind. But the next verse. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. This is a yardstick to checking your dreams. Is it pure, that dream? Is it honest? Is it true? Is the dream lovely? Is it of virtue? Is it of praise? Good report. Is it of good report? If it doesn't fall within that, you trash it. You throw it away. And somebody said, what if God is revealing to me something evil that is about to happen? You stand up and say no to it and it is no. You say no to it in faith and by authority, not in fear. Because most times in the dream, because you don't know the word of God, fear already has swallowed you. Mm -hmm. So by the time you wake up, you're already in fear. Everything you speak at that time is in fear. And fear will connect you to the object of your fear. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But when you wake up in knowledge and with authority and you say that dream in the name of Jesus, you cannot. The reason for revelation is redemption. Mm -hmm. God does not reveal things to you so they will happen. They are revealed so you can do something about, about it. it. The something you can do about an evil dream is to stop it. And if it is a good dream that agrees with the word of God, you war with it. You call it to be. You speak it to existence. You create it. Mm -hmm. You create it. You make it come to pass by the word of God. That thou by the mightest war a good warfare. You take that vision or dream or prophecy and you 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 go to war. You you cause it to happen, exercising your authority. So and if it does not agree with the word of God, mm -hmm. you cast it down and disable every demonic agency from using it to, 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 to actualization. Yes. You're saying something. Yes. So dreams and visions, you know, what's the difference? A vision is a revelation where you are physically alert and you see. A dream like is Peter. when you, like Peter in that prayer was in a vision. Was in a prayer was praying and saw a, vision. a dream, you're sleeping. Sleeping. Your body is shut and down. Images. But your mind Co sees images. Almost. That's a dream. A vision. Most times, you're, your whole body is awake. You're praying or you're looking. Mm, it has I mean, happened to me before. You just, just go so in a trance. Looking and it's That's like a, a trance. TV, like a movie, yeah, like a trance. You just see things. And then suddenly you're back and you're like, wow, I just saw something. Because so sometimes if in a trance or in a vision, you see what um, has happened with somebody and what do you do with them? Do you tell them or? You pray about it. Most yes. times it's good to pray, especially if you know what you're going to say will create fear. Okay. Again, you must be sure that what you want to tell the person, the person has the maturity to take it. Hmm. If not, what do you, you do? You pray. You, inter you, you step in, you supplicate. Wow. We pray for each other. Because like Peter, he kept the dream teams, uh, the vision. Yes. Is it vision? It was in a trance, sorry. Yes, a trance. It was in a trance and yes. saw it. Yes. So when um, circumstances came to confirm it, yes. so he walked, he now understood what it was, what it was yes. and went to Cornelius yes. and didn't doubt. Mm -hmm. Remember, Cornelius also had seen in a, what did Bible call it, was it vision? Yeah. Or in a dream, mm -hmm. a man coming or an angel telling him to call somebody. Yes. So he actually got up and called somebody. So yes. those kind of informative dreams, mm -hmm. so you act on them. You act on them. Because most times, when the Lord speaks to you, it will come with instructions. And even if it's a prophecy, a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, or a dream, or a vision, what you look out for is not the end product, it's the instruction. In the dream. In and that, in the that dream. instruction is the main thing that you look out for because whatever is the end product will never happen if that instruction is not added. Carried out. And most times, when the Lord is revealing something to you, it will be backed by an instruction. 
do like yes, this. If it's God. Go like this. Do this way. Send for Peter. S go to Cornelius. There will be an instruction. Even Ananias and um, uh, Paul. Yes. So he has seen a, in a vision a man, uh, whether it's bringing his blind eyes or something. Yes. You pray for him. To pray for him. Yes. So and then, so when Ananias, because Ananias was afraid, yes, and the dream told him, "Don't be afraid." He has the seen vision. in the vision that uh, because ah, this is the man that persecutes the yes. church. Why should I do anything yes. with him? And he said, "He has seen you praying for his sight." So already that has a redemptive agenda. You know that. That's yeah, but the man was afraid. It doesn't matter, but you can see that it is tailing towards redemption. Mm -hmm. So he, anyway, he was told that the man had seen him yes. <laughs> restoring his sight. Yes. So it helped him to go and look for Saul. Yes. Yes. So, so if it is God, it will have a redemptive agenda and it will agree with the word of God, with God's intent. Because the word of God is God's thought, the logos, the logos of God, the thought, God's thinking pattern, the idea behind. What is the idea and the thinking plan of God for man? It's redemption. So if it is God, it will have it will be tailored towards redeeming. Revelation is for redemption. God will show you things just for the fun of it. And God will show you things just so that you can just be happy. Every time he shows you something, there's an instruction that is attached to it. Because people have dreams. I'm asking all these things to yes. try and tackle all areas of our viewers. Yes. Uh, you know, emotional Fantastic. needs and Fantastic. everything. You no, know, people have dreams. You know, like Joseph, he dreamed that his uh, uh, brethren bowed to him. It yes. sounded like uh, an, a, a foolish dream or uh, to the brethren. Yes. Uh, but his parents, who were wiser, studied. They observed the, observe the same. Yes, and studied in their hearts. Yes. And then, even when he told the parents, you even the sun and moon bowed down. It him. sounded like it was far fetched. Yes. But they still kept it. So sometimes our daily dreams our petty dreams yes. and things that we have uh, that don't they're not significant i think that those can be ignored yes you know and any dream you, that you you can't find meaning to from mm, scripture yes so you can cast if it scares you or if it's something you, know, you don't you, want you cast so it, you cast it down you cast it down if it's something that is good oh i really love that remember when you ever dreamed that you were with uh, uh, uh Far back, like more than 20 years or 30 years, yes. when it was not even like ever possible. Right. When you saw yourself preaching with uh, Bonke, Rehard Bonke, yes. and we laughed and like, you know, so, and I said to you, one day you may even be in that uh, atmosphere or circle. Yes. But you know, we've talked with Rehard, he has come to your place, yeah. you have gone to his place, yeah. and it looked like far, 30 years, yeah. it seemed like it was a thing that is forever. But we've done this within the last 10 years that was a positive one that was a, a, a vision that was to an intent of redemption yes you know Preaching with because me and bonke meeting inspired something a here. lot to us and we started airing his uh, broadcast right on uh, our tv channel yes on our channel right so that was a dream you had it wasn't right. even a vision or a trance it was a dream but that dream had a redemptive plan in it. yeah you liked the dream yes so you embrace it i believed in and it and say okay let this happen i believed in it you see and it was what i desired mm. so and remember the man in our church that you saw him in an accident mm -hmm. and you sent for him mm -hmm. i think he couldn't make it or something mm -hmm. he didn't come but then he now came maybe how many days later mm -hmm battered from a a, a motorcycle mm. accident back, and he back, said back. far back yes far back and he said where were you on sunday when i called you to pray for you mm. you know remember you called him and he wasn't there uh, but we prayed for him mm. if you remember what was battered was the equipment the, yes yes not he himself. himself was saved yes yes just he was few saved. Bruises. And because and in the uh, oh yeah the dream was for him to caution him yeah that but yeah. since he was not available, we prayed Yes, for in his absence. He had the accident, <laughs> but nothing hurt him. The, but the equipment was battered. Was destroyed, and he told him, battered. don't worry, throw it away. It would have been you yes. that would have been damaged destroyed. like that. Yes. You know, yes. I remember. So that was a dream as well. That was a dream. Yeah. But in that dream was a message yes. that I yes. saw. To and I was this guy for this him week. to caution him yeah. to be careful. Yes. But he didn't show up. Mm. So we prayed, prayed for him. For him. And he was on and his hand. life was saved. Yes, only the because in that accident I saw him destroyed. destroyed. Yes. Blood all over was dead. Yes. But we then prayed, we prayed and declared that it will not happen. Yes. And he had the accident, but he was saved. Saved, yes. See. 
What like has Paul, to do with redemption? Remember Paul? Yes. He said, only the loss of the, uh, the yes. sheep, but that An every soul stood by me, me tonight. Last uh, night. Like, you know, and he was showed it, me. Was his own a vision? It was a vision. Yeah. I saw in a vision, vision or a dream. Uh, Acts 27 verse 1. When it was determined that we would sail into it, Italy, mm -hmm. they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band. And entering to a ship of Adritium, we launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, one Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius cautiously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go into his friends to refresh himself. Verse 7. And when we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce we were come over against Nidus, the wind not suffering us, we sailed under Crete over against Salmoni, and hardly passing it came unto a place which is called the Fair Heavens. Nigh where unto was the city of last year. Now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was, a perception it was a perception that this voyage, he perceived there was an impression in his spirit yes. that this voyage will be with hot and much damage. Okay. So what he was speaking here was a word of wisdom. Okay. He was speaking by word of wisdom, by gift of the spirit, not only of the lady and sheep, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. <laughs> and because the having was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also. And if by any means they might attain to Phoenix and there to winter, which is an having of Crete and lie toward the southwest and northwest. Mm. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, losing thence, they sailed close by Crete. But not long after, there arose a great against it a tempestuous wind called Eurocleden. <laughs> and when the ship not was today is enemy wind. Yes, Katrina. And when, yes. And when <laughs> the ship was caught and could not bear up into the wind, we let her dry. And running under a certain island which is called Clouda, we had much oh work to come by the boat. Which when they had taken up the used helps on the guarding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into quicksands and all that, we been exceedingly tossed with a tempest. The next day they lightened the ship. On and on it went. Now, follow this. I want you to see something. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the sheep. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, that was whose a vision. I am and whom I serve. That was a vision. Saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. Okay. And lo, God had given thee all them that sail with thee. We are for Sars. Yes. Be of good cheer. You see, for so I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Correct. Now this is revelative. Yes. This so, is redemptive. You know, and God gave him a gift. Yes. Uh, when he prayed for the situation. Yes. Of lives saved. He revealed to him. Mm, revealed this to is him not like him. somebody dreaming and seeing fish flying by his head. <laughs> or, okay. Or chameleon uh, moving on his neck, neck and he's asking what does he mean or a policeman wearing short or a policeman wearing a short <laughs> on a bicycle what that, does he mean, what does he mean? police will arrest you <laughs> i mean those are useless dreams yeah, they so have so no redemptive don't have, plan in them There's i no think it's maybe what you or you see yourself wearing a school shirt your primary school shirt <laughs> in the village <laughs> when you are now a phd holder <laughs> or you're wearing a school boy shirt and you become and afraid you're that like, you're going back to school mean? what does he mean doesn't mean anything it doesn't mean anything. It means the days of you wearing two boy shirt didn't clean out of your head. Mm -hmm. It played back. That's all it means. It has no meaning. Every time God is revealing something, it must have within it a redemptive agenda. Mm -hmm. You see, God does not gist. Oh, yeah. God is not jobless. Mm -hmm. That you just say, see, and he shows you a picture. Mm -hmm. uh, cockroaches. Mm -hmm. And then you go, what does he mean? Mm -hmm. It means your head is dirty. Clean it up. God doesn't do that. When God shows you something, is to an intent. Mm. God is a God of purpose. It's to an intent. Either he intends to achieve something or intends to accomplish something. So dreams and revelations and visions are all intended to achieve a redemptive plan of God or to bring it to an end where revelation happens. And you know, we're, we're taking time to deal with all of this because this is a very important subject. Mm. Tomorrow we're going to be talking it's on an, perceptions an, it's in an, a deeper... It's an important uh, subject thing. and you need to understand. So, so you don't get spellbound by your dream or be kept in prison by your dream or be struggling with all these dream things. You've got to stay in the Word of God. And there are it's many superior. Christians who 
exalt magnified dreams like this yeah even when you are telling them no look the bible says you say but i know my dreams yes. i know myself yes. that my dreams I have are a gift of dreams dream. <laughs> dreamer even joseph <laughs> even joseph only dreamt is about behold the dreamer. Is it one or two dreams. Two, two dreams. One or two dreams. That's all. <laughs> Your own, you dream every day. You are not just in and you are, you, know, you are actually lost in So dream. throw them out and focus on the word of God. You get rid of those things. Mm. Clean your head. Fill yes. it off with scripture yes. and stay with the word of God. And all those scary, dirty, useless, meaningless dreams. It's because of bad food and eating late at night many times. Sometimes. So <laughs> and sometimes so it's because of your past life things you were exposed to. Mm. Maybe you were used to watching horror movies. And again, very important. scary things. Mm. And those things were stored up hiding somewhere now in your they subconscious. Translate as fear. And once in a while, they come up as fear. Other things and start haunting you. And that's why as a believer, you, you must should. be exposed to teaching the renewing of your mind. Mm. And that's what we're doing with the word of God right now. You have to hack all those dreams mm. and throw them up and make your dream life less important mm. and make the word of God Ultimate, yes. Once you do that, those things will suddenly lose relevance. relevance. And you will come into the liberty, the freedom mm. that you have in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Not tied by any clutch of dependence or tied by anything that the devil could use to hoodwink you and mess up your life. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. So it's so important for you it. to know that mm -hmm. your dream must not be exalted Above beyond the word, the word of God. God. Amen. You stay with the word. Color Father, we shape. pray for viewers Thank today. You, we Jesus. take authority over every oh, yes. fear. Mm. Fear. You fear, we bind and cast you out in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The love of God overshadows your heart. The love that God has for you, you have come to know and to believe that love. So you walk in that love. You function in that love. And let that love keep and guide your steps and order you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You remember that God loves you and he will not let you dash your foot against his tomb. Good things are on the way. Oh, yes. Every blessing and every favor is yours. Good gifts come from God. No evil comes from God. And every weapon of evil against you is abolished. Yes. We cancel every useless dream. And we cancel every demonic setup. And every conspiracy. And every weapon formed against you is aborted right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You will be blessed today. And enjoy the fullness and the abundance of God's grace. Reign in life. Mm -hmm. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, guys. We love you. Glory. Excited that we're able to share what we shared with you. Mm. Make sure you order for a copy of this book. It yes. will bless your entire life. Yes. And get copies for friends and loved ones and other resources that this ministry offers you. We are committed to equipping and building you up in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell other people about what's going on here on this platform. We love you guys. And we are glad to be a blessing in your life. Just before we go, honey, one word for our viewers. Dream of the word of God. Dream the Bible or the scriptures that you read yesterday, last week, last year. Dream of them and see them come to pass. You know, you can get so filled with, with the, the scriptures that it becomes your dream. Yes. You start dreaming. Mm. You stay in that. Be so filled with the scriptures. Eat it, think it, mm. meditate it, speak it, drive with it everywhere you are. Let the word of God fill you up and you live a victorious life all the time. We love you guys. We look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow. And until we come again your way tomorrow, this is Rachel and Abel Damina saying that the kingdom, kingdom of God is in power. Amen. Hello. I hope you have been blessed by that wonderful message. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. For you to grow spiritually, you need to hear, study, and meditate on the word. You need to not only hear, but to also read and see. And that is why you need the Christocentric meal. This is a book that reveals to you who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. This book interprets and breaks down the word into daily meals, making it easier for you to understand and study, build up and strengthen your inner man, all the while growing your relationship with God and your confidence as a believer. To order this life-changing book and other titles, DVDs and CDs by Dr. Abel Damina, call the number or email the address on the screen. Starting the new year with this book is your first step to guaranteeing an enriched life and new year.